Hello everyone, this is Faith at Faith and Books. I'm just doing my regular Sunday update. Um, I didn't record this morning in my car because it was 14 degrees out and it was just too cold for me. I've been cold all week. You'd think I would have acclimated by now, but I'm not. I'm just cold all the time, irrationally cold because I'm in a heated house. Um, but anyway, I just couldn't bear the idea of going out on this really frigid, icy, cold morning to record. So I'm recording now. I'm going to do it quickly. Um, so I, I made a list of things to talk about so I can get through it pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, so first thing, uh, we had our first City of God read along Zoom discussion yesterday, and I think it went pretty well. We were sort of introducing ourselves and just talking about, you know, getting the general framework, and maybe we didn't delve as much as we could have into kind of the meat of what we're reading. Um, hopefully that'll happen next time. I hope people thought it was a pretty good discussion and they'll come back for it. I am so enjoying it. I really, really am. One thing we did was we started the brainstorming um, historical fiction to read that's set in ancient times. So that was, that was a fun thing. Um, so yeah, so that's going well. Um, and then this past week, I think I completed four books, two of them kind of by accident, and one of them was a children's book that I was reading aloud. Um, so that was Trumpet of the Swan by E.B. White. I don't have it with me to show you. Um, and I was reading that to the little six-year-old, and we finished it up. And it's just lovely. Like, do if you have a child in your life, give that child this book or read them this book or do yourself a favor and read the book. It's just a lovely, lovely read. I really enjoyed it. Uh, E.B. White was really good. Uh, so that was one that I finished. Then um, another one that I finished had to do with the Africa Cup of Nations. I had, so I was originally assigned Gabon, who won or broke even, tied with other teams. So I, I only read one book and I didn't have to do as much reading as I thought I would if they had lost. Um, and then they did finally lose to Burkina Faso. So they became my team. And the book that I could easily access for them, I actually had to use an Audible credit from my husband. Because uh, I don't do Audible, but he does. Um, and it was a children's chapter book. I guess a middle grade level book called Sophie and the Albino Camel. Although the narrator was British, so she said albino, uh, camel, which just doesn't sound right. Um, and it was it was very short. It was only an hour and 41 minutes, so I just listened to it in a couple of days. Uh, but it was quite good. It was spooky, though. So if you have a sensitive child, it might not be for, for that type of child. But I found it very entertaining. Um, it's just about a young girl who lives in Burkina Faso. Her father is a scientist who's studying carnivorous plants of the Sahara. And I guess it's a British series because maybe they have more than one, like there's a whole series. <coughs> but I'm not familiar with that. I had not heard of it. So I don't know if we have it over here. And it might be a UK thing. Um, the uh, author was Stephen Davis. And, um, and the narrator had a British accent. And uh, anyway, it's about her adventure. She, she's kind of lonely. She wants to make friends. And she meets up with this young boy who has this albino camel. And they go on these rather spooky adventures. Um, and it was good. I thought it was really entertaining. And it, it, did, it does give a glimpse into, you know, the lives and the, the culture and the geography of the area. So, yeah. So I would, I would recommend it if you're child is okay with kind of scary stuff. <clears throat> so let's take Trumpet on the Swan, Sophie and the Albino Camel, and then I finished um, kind of by accident because <laughs> I didn't know how long it was. I was reading, oh I'm going to cough, hold on a second, let me take my sip of tea. Hmm. And that always happens when I sit down to talk, I get a tickle in my throat. But anyway, um, for uh, to get a head start on it's called Febregency. I was saying it wrong last time. Febregency, which is the challenge to read uh, Regency, you know, novels and about the Regency era in February. And I'll link to a couple of the uh, 
announcement videos. I didn't link before. And I'm probably not going to follow the prompts properly because I seldom do with these things. I sort of get the idea and then I run with it myself or I do as much as I feel I can. Um, but anyway, to get a head start on that because I needed a, a read on my Kindle, I started Castle Rack Rent um, by Maria, Maria Edgeworth. So Maria Edgeworth was a... I guess she was Anglo-Irish. She lived in Ireland back at late 1700s, uh, early 1800s, and this was published in 1800. And she, I wrote, I read her book, *The Absentee*, which was about an absentee landlord. And Rackrent, Castle Rackrent, is also essentially about that too. Um, this absentee, you know. Uh, English landlord who comes to his estate in Ireland and sees how badly it's been taken care of and tries to get control over it and it's it's a good it was a good novel I enjoyed it if you like Jane Austen it's more humorous and lighter really I mean Jane Austen is hysterically funny but she's you know it's because of her irony and and her satirical eye whereas this is a little bit broader the humor I think is a little bit broader it's very Irish humor um so I really enjoy that. So ever since I had read that, which was a few years ago, I wanted to read something else by her. So hearing about Feb Regency, I picked out the book Castle Rack Rent, which I think I might have started before, but DNF. Anyway, I did not realize that it was really a novella. It's only 90 pages long, apparently. And I was reading when I was falling asleep at night, so I just wasn't really grasping what was going on very much. And then it suddenly ends. And there's this weird, these really comical footnotes stuck in that are obviously go right along with the novel, but it's like they're making, they're making the novel, which is this memoir of the steward of this estate. He's, he's remembering the four different, um, what's the word you want? Like the, the Lord of the estate, the four different ones that he, he was a steward through. And, um, so it's like his memoirs, and so it's got like, so they added on these footnotes, which are really comical. Uh, anyway, I did not know what I was reading. I might go back and reread it, but I've already read it. I finished it, like, and not even realizing that it was that short. So I've already done my Feb Regency uh, reading, um, so I don't know. I might go back and reread it, or I might come up with something else to read. Maybe another, there's another title that I've heard floating around by Maria Edgeworth, and maybe I'll try to read that. Um, but I have I have to decide that. I don't have my uh, my February TBR really that much planned out, so I don't know quite what I'll do there. But anyway, so I finished that. So Trump of the Swan. Um, what was the other one? Uh, Sophie and the Albino Cam Camel. Um, Castle Rack Rent by Marie, Marie, Maria Edgeworth. And then I also finished this book, Dreams of Trespass, uh, Tales of a Harem Girlhood by F Fatima Mernissi. And uh, this is a book I, I'd really want to talk about, except I don't feel like I have my thoughts together on it. But it was fascinating. It was a glimpse into this exotic world that I know nothing about. Uh, it's very thought-provoking. It's beautifully written, and very it made me very sympathetic to the culture, to the plight of women, how complicated it is, uh, the the roots of feminism uh, in in the Arab world. Just it's just really really good read. I'm gonna lend it to my friend who said she was interested in it. Um, but I recommend this. If you can get a hold of this, really interesting. Um, yeah, I, I highly recommend it. Um, and one of the things that made me do it is it made me go and look stuff up on Wikipedia. And there's this um, celebrity woman. She says she's Lebanese, but when I looked it up on Wikipedia, they said Syrian. But she was this a singer and actress who mysteriously died when she was 34 in a car accident that they never figured out quite what happened. So maybe she was killed. And she was a um, really outspoken feminist. What was her name? Asha Ham. Ashwa. Uh, no, I'm not going to. I'll link below. She's a beautiful singer. I listened to some of her music. It's kind of reminded me of Edith Piaf. 
um, but with a Middle Eastern sound to it. Um, really interesting woman. I, I never knew anything about her before. The whole thing is really interesting. I didn't know that there were feminist movements going on in the Near East and, and uh, mostly in the Near East, in Egypt and Syria and Lebanon um, in the 1800s. So it was really interesting. It was all about the nationalist movement in Morocco. Just their whole... Because you get like two lenses. You get the lens of the way the Moroccans were viewing what was going on. She was born in 1940. So, and she's recounting her childhood. Literally, she just goes up to about when she's nine. Um, and just the way the harem operated. And it's, it's really fascinating. Highly recommend this one. So that was a really rewarding read. And I didn't even need to read it because I could have possibly needed to read it. Um, but since Gabon tied with Morocco, and then Morocco just lost to Egypt. So... I didn't have to read it, but I'm really glad I did. That's, I, I really like that one. Now, if I have to read Egypt, I did get a book out of the library. This is called Mama Maggie. And it just looked so interesting to me when I did a Google search and found it. I was actually looking for another book on Egypt through, through my library, and this popped up. But uh, what made me interested in it is that this woman, she's called like the Mother Teresa of Cairo. And she's a Coptic Christian. I'm really interested in really early Christianity and the Orthodox world and just patristics and all that kind of stuff really fascinates me. And she's a Coptic woman. She was born into a well-to-do family, but she winds up, you know, she gets married and has kids, but she winds up, maybe, maybe she's widowed or something. I don't know. I'm going to find out. She winds up giving up everything and moving to the slums and taking care of these children. She provides schools for them, all kinds of stuff. Uh, so it just sounds really fascinating. Like there she is. I haven't read this yet. There she is, a young person. And then let's see, you can see these are all black and white. Like there's the, na the typical call them garbage children because they live in the garbage dumps of the city of Cairo. Here's a school she started for the children. Anyway, so I love stuff like this, like real slice of life, kind of. Is that what you call it? Like a real person doing really radical things. I think that's really interesting. Um, so, yeah, so that's going to be my read for Egypt. We know Egypt's going into the final playoff, so we'll see. Um, I don't have the other, in the Africa Cup of Nations, the other two teams that are playing today are Equatorial Guinea and Senegal. I have nothing lined up for them. So I don't quite understand how things work. I think Cameroon's going to play Egypt next. And Burkina Faso is going to play the winner of this game. So either Senegal or Equatorial Guinea. And I have nothing lined up for them. I don't know what I'm going to read. So I have to do a quick, desperate search for something um, about those countries or written. I don't know. I have to come up with something. So... And I guess at the end, it might be Cameroon, say, versus Egypt or something like that. Would they be the last final two? No, they're going to play next. Ah, I'm confusing myself. But anyway, I, I might have to come up with something for some, uh, to me, obscure country uh, that might be hard to find something for. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, let's see. So that's that. Yeah, those are the four books I finished this week. That's the Africa Cup of Nations. Um, right now, I'm, I'm. This is for the uh, comedy. What, what is it called? A, a book club where we read a, a comedic book every month. Uh, the name is not. <laughs> my head is not together right now. Anyway, I'm reading "Thank You Jeeves" by P.G. Woodhouse. Got this out of the library, and I'm on page 129. So I'm gonna. Uh, I'm hoping to read a big chunk of it today, and finish it by the end of of the month, finish it mon Monday night. Um, yeah, so that's that, and I'm enjoying it. It's a hoot, it's really funny. So that's a nice light read. Um, I also got this beautiful collection of Robert Burns poems because for Feb Regency, I am planning to host a Burns night or a Burns supper. And that's when you 
cook traditional Scottish foods, but I'm not going to do a haggis because <laughs> nobody will eat it. And you really can't anyway. We like we can't go get sheep stomach to cook something in, which is what they did. Uh, but I think I'll do something that's reminiscent, and then I'm gonna. I found a recipe for oat cakes and this really delicious sounding dessert that has scotch whiskey in it, and we might drink some scotch whiskey. I don't drink very much, but every once in a while it's kind of fun to do something like that. So yeah, so we're gonna have a Burns night. Um, I think I'm gonna make it the last weekend in February, and we're gonna read a lot of, I, I'm planning to read a lot of Burns poetry, and I'm gonna ask my family, I don't know if they'll go along with me, but you know, there's really short ones. I think we might take turns of reading Bobby Burns' poetry out and perfecting our Scottish accents. And I might come up also with other books that I've read set in Scotland that I really like. I don't know. I'm in a Scottish mood. So so that's that. And I'm really excited that I got this because I've always liked Robert Burns and I've never had a collection of his poetry before. So now I do, and I'm I'm really excited about that. And then the other thing that I am currently uh, listening to is Agnes Gray by, who wrote that, Anne Bronte, and that is for the uh, Read Along Most Victorian book club, and I think it's either the second week in February or the third week in February. We're having our discussion on that. I've read it before. Uh, this time I'm listening to it. I'm listening to it um, on LibriVox, and I'm reading the. Th I'm listening to the third version, which is uh, read by just one girl, Libby Gone or something like that, G O H N. Something. Anyway, she's excellent reader. She's American accent, but very soft voice, and very clear, and she's just the perfect sound for the narrator because the narrator is a young girl of, of say 19 who's telling the story. Um, and this is a, I really think this is my favorite Bronte because it isn't heavy. It's not heavy handed, it's not melodramatic. It doesn't have any sort of supernatural stuff going on. Uh, it's just the, you know, the memoir of a young girl and her, her few years spent as a governess and what she experienced. And um, yeah, I really like it. I'm enjoying it. So I'm already at chapter nine. It's not a long novel. It's not as long as some of the others um, that the Brontes wrote. And so I think I'm pretty much, I mean, from what I remember before, I'm, I'm pretty much halfway through or maybe more than halfway through. Anyway, I am enjoying that very much. Um, and then what else am I reading? Is that it? I'm trying to, oh, I think I'm going to participate in a reading sprint, which I always read as reading stint, <laughs> but it's a sprint. I don't know if it's my thing, but I'm going to try one with the um, uh, Read Along Most Victorian group. That's tomorrow night, Monday night. And for that, oh, I didn't bring it. Um, I'm going to start reading Till We Have Faces by C.S. Lewis. So I want to read that. That's going to be my book book. I have to come up with a something to do with uh, whatever country wins in the Africa Cup. I have to either, not have to, but I either want to reread Castle Rent, Rack Rent or find another book by Maria Edgeworth to read on my Kindle. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. So I managed to talk for almost 19 minutes, so so sorry about that. I'm just, I feel like I'm just babbling. Um, but I guess that's it for now. So I hope you all are doing well. Thank you so much for those of you that uh, left what you were reading last week. That was that was really fun to read through what everybody was reading. I appreciate that. So thank you. And I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying warm. I hope you're staying healthy. And happy reading. Bye.